Hi, today I'm going to show you how to um, install a fuser sleeve on an HP LaserJet 4250, a 4300, or a 4350. Um, this is really a uh, pretty simple repair um, it, that can it really save you just a ton of money. Um, what we're going to be replacing is the sleeve. Um, there's a lot of variety of these sleeves on the market. and. Um, we sell a, a, a very quality sleeve. Um, remember, HP does not sell internal parts to these fusers. They, they, of course, always want you to replace the whole fuser purchased through them. So these aftermarket parts that we put inside here, um, the industry has relied on third-party companies. So, of course, quality is everything. Uh, this procedure, I like to use a uh, number two Phillips with a good tip, uh, magnetized, and also a, uh, a very small uh, flat blade or even a pick tool. Let's get started. Um, I like to work with a fuser just like this. And um, there's two screws, one here and here. Let's remove those. <clears throat> Remember, um, on the way through these procedures, I, uh, there's a lot of uh, different uh, methods of doing this. And I try to pick and choose a, uh, a, uh, a method that's going to be, you know, the most easiest for you uh, without getting uh, too in-depth and then of course I'm always trying to keep the videos a little short. Um, at this point in time we remove the two screws. This front is going to hinge open but before we can do that we want to remove one screw on a little uh, black plastic paper guide because what happens is we can't hinge the front of this fuser open. Uh, push it to the left and it comes right off. Nice and easy. And then there's also a red wiring harness with one black self-driving screw. We're also going to remove that. So um, as we're, we're doing these different procedures and that you'll, you might be uh, watching, um, you know, uh, keep in mind I'm not, uh, we're not uh, going through big procedures and complete teardowns. I'm just showing you the basic to get the job done. Um, at this point in time we want this lid to hinge open. In order to do so there's just one clip on the gear side that has to be pressed back and you can see that my front just opened right up and then just kind of slowly wiggle it and it'll drop right out of its position. Okay, you might see a couple springs right now or one that just fell off. There's one on each side. They have a hole and just set this to the side for right now. Okay, now we're starting to see the fuser uh, sleeve. It's, it's exposed. On, on this model uh, HP chose to use a uh, metallic sleeve uh, with a Teflon coating. Um, we want to remove the main drive gear. I'm using a very small pick tool and I'm just going to press into it and um, what I'm doing is I'm actually bringing the clip back a little bit and then and I'm going to pull this gear off. This is a two-part gear that actually has an inside to it with a couple springs. Um, you, could, you could toothbrush this gear off and clean it up um, or even replace it if you chose to. And we're going to put that to the side. Now, um, right now what we want to do is on the gear side we want to get underneath this wiring harness and lift it up. And we want to unplug it just like that and then feed the wires through the harness. Okay, um, we're not um, I chose not to go with this side and take it off. There is a plastic plate here. It's a wiring harness plate. It's held in with just a couple clips. These break real easy if you're not experienced with them. And then what you have is you have this whole plastic area that's just kind of hanging there. And um, I didn't feel it was going to be a good uh, method, you know, to approach this. So I'm going to just, uh, again, keep in mind we're going to leave this side on. But we are going to want to pick this up just a little bit and um, as we uh, pull off this side. Now the side with the exposed wiring harness, we're going to just lift it up by lifting up the other side a little bit and we can unplug this wiring harness. Simply just squeeze it and pull it out. Now there's also a little white clip that keeps the collar on the sleeve and it's right here. We want to be really careful right now at this point to not hurt the sleeve or the element that's, uh, that uh, actually heats up. There's the white clip. I just simply pressed it back and it'll fall right off. Now the, uh, the sleeve itself, the collar will come off. You can see that. Now I can actually slide the sleeve off, but before I do that, I just want to kind of show you something. On your replacement sleeve, 
that you purchase, one side will have a bigger contact point than the opposing side. On the larger contact side, that side is going to go where the red wire is. Um, these are actually grounding contacts for the sleeve, um, so they are kind of a directional uh, item. You do want to follow that. Um, right now, we can actually just kind of, again, lift up on the opposing side, slide your damaged sleeve off, and you can see this one has a real extreme buildup right in the center. And uh, this is, again, common for the Teflon. The Teflon's worn. Uh, print defects were happening. The toner cartridge didn't take care of it. And um, this is a perfect uh, uh, candidate for just re-sleeving the fuser and uh, getting you back on your way. So um, right now at this point, what I like to do is we're going to use a lubricant uh, agent on the uh, element, and I actually have an element uh, here, um, which I was going to show, and it's actually a ceramic glass that's on the bottom of this uh, that we're going to lubricate, and we want to really get that lubrication in there, and when you purchase one of our sleeves, we provide this lubrication. The lubrication is the key to this repair. Um, so many of our customers that have purchased uh, these fusers from other companies um, have just uh, experienced such bad uh, results, um, not because of the quality of the sleeve that they have purchased, but um, the quality of the lubricant that they use. The, uh, the lubricant, we, we, will, we provide a little bit of this uh, with our sleeves. Um, this stuff is extremely pricey. Uh, it's about $150 for just a very small amount of it. Now, what I like to do is, again, I'm using a glove and I put some lubricant right on the end of it. And um, if you don't have a glove, we don't provide these. Uh, you can use a sandwich baggie or some saran wrap. And again, you just don't want to get it on you. Um, now, uh, some of the guys have used you know, a petroleum uh, product out in the industry, and uh, that doesn't work. You, you want to stay clear of some of these uh, witch blend lubricants that are out there. Now, what I'm doing is, I'll show you a little example on this one, is I'm actually just getting this lubricant nice and good all over this element, real heavy. And uh, you want to do this and, and just build it up real nice and well. You don't, uh, not too much worried about the other side of it um, up here, but we want to get it all across this glass. So at this point in time, we have sufficient amount of lubricant, and we're just going to go ahead and reinstall the sleeve. I like to just pick it up carefully. We don't want to damage the new one or, uh, you know, of course, scratch it. So just give yourself some room and just slide it in nice and easy and get it over the opposing collar. Okay, now we can install the other, uh, the bushing or the collar on this side and it simply just slides right into place. And you want to push it in all the way. You don't want to fight anything right now. You just want it to go right in that socket. And we're going to reinstall the little white clip and just put it right down at the bottom. And take your time with this. Sometimes things fall or they break. Or, I'm sorry, you don't want them to break. You just want to just take your time. Now, that one just clipped nice and easy into place. And now we want to drop the assembly back into its socket and reattach the, uh, the black uh, plug. Simply lift up again. There we go. Now, you can see it. it's nice and easy. It's back in its socket. Now we can retract these uh, wires back into their wiring harness. Again, I tried to stay clear of that other side um, rather than uh, giving an approach on this to uh, tear down the whole uh, fusing assembly. And when we redo these, we do try to uh, get in depth with the fuser um, and uh, more so than what you're seeing right now. Okay, so the wiring harness is in nice and well. And we can reinstall the gear. The gear again has a little cutout in it, and uh, it will only go on the shaft in one way. And pull back on it, make sure it's locked into its socket. Now we can reinstall the cover plate. Again, remember these springs, they might fall out at you, no big deal. And start off with the little grooves in the metal at the bottom, and simply just put it back into its socket. Trying to keep those, that little red wire out of your way and you're just going to push it forward and you'll notice there's a couple little uh, nipples on the uh, 
black part of those collars on the one that we took off, one on each side. At this point in time, you may have to hold the fuser and press down real hard. Okay, this clip locked it back into place, which is good. But you know, sometimes these uh, clips, they don't lock into place, and you actually have to hold it down with your hand while you're working with a uh, screwdriver to uh, reinstall the two screws on the top. So you can see this is a real easy repair on a fuser that's uh, quite expensive. Um, so we got one screw in. Let's put the opposing screw in. And again, I try to uh, work just like you. Um, I don't try to manipulate the video. It is what it is, and uh, so sometimes you'll see me struggle. Let's put in the red wiring harness. Again, this is a grounding contact. That was uh, part of that uh, side of the uh, fuser sleeve that had that uh, larger cutout in it for that uh, contact point. It's just like a little uh, brush, wire brush that kind of hits it. Okay, let's reinstall the little black plate. Again, real simple. Hole lines up. Now, if your fuser suffers from an error, like a 50-point error, the sleeve's not going to correct it. This is just a, uh, a repair to correct the common <coughs> print quality problems. <coughs> so now you can turn the fuser by hand, making sure that sleeve really spins nice and free. Um, again, uh, the key here is the quality lubricant that uh, we use with these fusers. Um, it really is. Uh, so at this point in time, you would reinstall it back in your printer and uh, run, some, uh, run some prints, see how it does. And if just uh, by uh, accident you happen to get it like an, a fuser error, um, <clears throat> remove the fuser and uh, just check your contacts. Make sure all the plugs are plugged in real good on both sides, just in case. And also when, you're, uh, when we were working with this element, you really want to make sure you're not getting aggressive with it because this porcelain will crack so, uh, so quickly and if it cracks, uh, you, you're definitely in a position at that point in time where you're going to have to purchase a new fuser. So um, I hope this was helpful for you today on a repair that really is simple, requires just a couple tools, and it can save you a bunch of money. We sell these uh, sleeves uh, with, the, uh, with the lubricant uh, for under $50, and uh, what a great repair. Thanks again.